Silent Voice may very well be Naoko Yamada Shea Devon. It's a paramount achievement of art, film, and the human condition, with an ambitious story about redemption and the way nonverbal communication shapes lives. There was no other director on earth that could have made this film into the masterpiece that it was. Emphasizing the subtleties of life is something that Yamada has mastered, and it's here where the heart of the film is. Through its brilliant directing and shot composition does the film get its zest, its soul. If you're familiar with Yamada's work, then you know her quirks, panted leg shots, playful shot composition, and accentuation to life. Almost everything in frame for Yamada work is done with a purpose. She often tries to tell stories within her shot, to contextualize understanding for the characters and the moments. Her scenes are littered with meanings, and one of my favorites in the film is following Nishida's accident. Ueno blames Nishimiya for what happened and starts to attack her. She throws Nishimiya against a fence, and what immediately comes into frame are daisies. Once Ishida's mother breaks up the fight, Nishimiya, who's already on the floor, gets on her hands and knees and is crying for forgiveness at the feet of Ishida's mother, yelling out broken I'm sorry through her sobbing. She's blaming herself and her suicide attempt for what happened to Ishida, and she feels responsible for it and is begging his mother for forgiveness. Present in the frame are the daisies from earlier, and this is where Yamada's genius comes into light. Daisies are symbolic for innocence, purity, and love. Not only is Yamada expressing Nishimiya's innocence and what happened, but it also parses her character in the face of Ueno, claims that this is all her fault. And this juxtaposition is brilliant and gives us insight into who these characters are and what they're feeling. It's also important to note that for much of this scene, the daisies aren't in focus. The line of innocence is blurred, and given what happened, it allows us to take inventory of the nuances of this event. So when the scene closes, it is once again the shot of the daisies, but this time they're in focus, growing in the concrete against all odds. The daisies are also symbolic for new beginnings, and this moment sparks change for Nishimiya. While she always emotes positivity, this is probably the strongest and most passionate thing she's ever done. Begging for forgiveness at a mother's feet sobbing and vocally communicating. This moment is so overwhelming, it even pushes her out of frame. And flower symbolism isn't the only thing that Yamada uses to augment the expression of ideas. Koi fish are ever present in the film, and so much of Nishimiya and Nishida's new relationship grew from feeding them together. For the Japanese, koi fish are representative of strength and overcoming adversity, which could be interpreted as an application to both Nishimiya and Ishida's characters, or even their relationship. Both characters need to deal with their depression and their past, struggling with it to move beyond the present, perfectly illustrated by the koi fish. And Silent Voice is sensory like that. It gives you a sense of feeling, not always with what characters say, but how things look and feel. What's in frame, and this is critical for a film about communication and how it manifests itself in different ways. Yamada rewards you for looking carefully, to pay attention to the unspoken, it puts its audience in the mindset of Nishimiya to help empathize and understand her. Shots of Nishimiya and Ishida riding the train together come to mind. How with a few shot, it contextualizes their relationships at two different times. In the first train ride they take together, we get cuts of them alone. They don't share a frame for much of this scene, and this shows us the distance that they still have. The first time they both are in frame, however, is through a low shot we get of their legs. The distance between them is clear and is demarcated by a door between them. After Ishida reads some text message from Nishimiya to understand her a little bit better, does he actually get to share a frame with her? However, the door is still in between them. A door is a portal to a new place and a new world, and this shows that they're still a world apart. Yamada portrays this stunningly with beauty, grace, and nuance. Closer to the end of the film, Nishimiya and Ishida take a train again, but this time they're both in the same frame. They're sitting next to each other, and that space that was once vast between them has dissipated. They're close now, figuratively and physically. Shot composition tells a story within a story. It provides the audience with windows into the state of characters, how they feel, and what's changed. And Yamada uses this so well to foreshadow. She rewards her audience for paying attention to Nishimiya. When Nishimiya's family and Ishida go to see the fireworks, we get shots and sounds from the festival. But abruptly, it cuts to a shot of Nishimiya with her back turned to the camera. Festival sounds are gone, and a loud silence fills the space, backdropping her as the sky, which takes up most of the frame. After a few seconds, it cuts back to the festival with the sounds of normalcy. 
When Yuzuru and her mother go to get food, Ishida and Nishimiya talk about her birthday, and Nishida suggests that they should spend her next birthday together. Nishimiya just smiles and doesn't really say anything, and this is her second clue for what's to come. Her silence speaks loudly, and we as an audience know Nishimiya a bit at this point, so that silence to plans about her birthday isn't normal, we know that she's not like that, she wouldn't do that. She then takes some moments to smile, to close her eyes and to bask in the fireworks, knowing very well that this may be the last happy moment that she'll ever have. Being content in this moment, that at least for a second, she's happy. She then excuses herself and says she needs to study, rejecting Ishida's offer to walk her home. The final part is really where it hits home, where Ishida tells her see you later in sign language, as they've always done for all their meetings, and Nishimiya just stands idly for a few seconds, people and time moving by her, and then just says thank you, not a see you later in return as we're accustomed to. And these are the things that you only notice if you're playing close attention. How out of character all this is for Nishimiya and only by looking can you really understand what's happening. When Nishida goes to her house to pick up Yuzuru's camera, do we really see what this leads up to? Nishimiya climbs to the ledge of the balcony and with the flash of the fireworks do we see a cross from the shadows of the window. Ishida screams her name and falls over on a table. Nishimiya is deaf and can't hear any of this. She still thinks she's alone. We get another shot from Ishida's point of view which parallels the shot of Nishimiya from earlier with her back turned to the camera and the sky present in front of her. And her suicide is veiled by a curtain, not for us or for Ishida to see. The last thing I want to say about this scene is how Yamada uses her signature leg shot in it. Yamada uses legs to convey feelings, how someone is standing, how they are moving, what does it say about them as people, what does it say about their situation, and this has never been more clear than in the leg shot in this scene, with Nishimiya's legs hanging in midair her life suspended. It's brilliant, poignant, and loud. It's Yamada at her very best, and it's the essence of this film. It's powerful. It conveys the feelings of a moment so eloquently without words. It's in the spirit of how Yamada directs, and it's what this film is about. It's hopeful, sad, painful, and beautiful. It captures life, all the hurtful and the fantastical, all the scary and why it's important why we should love ourselves and why life is a gift. That depression is crippling but love is uplifting. Why the weakest can be the strongest and why humanity is about making ourselves better. That we all deserve a second chance and our mistakes have grave consequences that we have to live with forever. It's moving, depressing, and damn it if it isn't the truth. That to truly understand life, you just need to look around, absorb what the world has, see the flowers, how people act and the little things that make up oneself. That the character that spoke the loudest had a silent voice. This is what Yamada expresses and this is what silent voice is about. That the things often heard most clearly usually aren't said. They're lived. Hi everyone and welcome to Subtitled, I'm Carla Navas and thank you for watching my video on Silent Voice. Um, it was one of my favorite movies ever, probably my favorite anime movie ever, and the second I saw it I knew I wanted to do something on it. And I particularly love Yamada, and as you can see uh, from my YouTube channel with my Maid Dragon video and my UFO video, there's something about her and KyoAni that just makes things stand out in a way that's personal to me. Uh, and I really, that's why I wanted to do this video. I love what Yamada did and I wanted to show what elevated this film to something that can transcend art. Uh, I'm going to link my UFO video uh, on the side there to kind of show uh, another side of what I love about Yamada. She had her big hand in, in UFO as well and kind of a lot of the same reasons why I love UFO, I love Silent Voice. I'm also going to link Under the Scope's video on Naoko Yamada on, in the little description below because it's the most comprehensive thing on Yamada on the, anywhere on the internet, I think. And Under the Scope does a great job with all his videos, so please subscribe to him because he's amazing. And that Yamada video is one of the best things I've ever seen on anime YouTube. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to keep putting out content. Hopefully we'll have more going on in the summer now the basketball season is over and I have a little more time on my hands. Uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, stay tuned.